Joe Fazer himself said 14%, but I do believe he's suffering from body dysmorphia. And so what do you think? Let me know in the comment section what percent body fat you think Joe Fazer is. Coach Greg and Joel Fazer is fat. Who would have thunk it? And so he went and got a DEXA scan as well as a number of body fat estimates from various sources. And it came out, the golden standard DEXA scan says 15.8% body fat. But is it accurate? Of course it's not accurate. Have you seen Joel Fazer? Does he look fat to you? I look kind of average, maybe a bit leaner than the normal person. So I'm gonna guess I'm like 14%. And so Joel Fazer, who I believe is suffering from body dysmorphia, sees himself at 14% body fat. He estimated he's 14%, says I'm slightly leaner than the average guy. Maybe a little bit. Have you seen his physique? Joel Fazer, at his fattest, bulked up weight, is still leaner than the average person. But he thinks he's only slightly leaner than average. And why does he think this? Because he's comparing himself to the elite. And so perhaps he goes on Instagram, YouTube, and compares himself to those people that he sees and says, well, in comparison to those guys, I'm about average. But does he know what an average body actually looks like? The average guy is about 25% body fat. 25% body fat means they're overweight, obese, fat. Pick the words you like. I don't invent these words. If you're 25% body fat, you're overweight. You're obese, you're fat. And so just for reference standards, let's look at his BMI. Joe Fazer is 185 pounds and tall guy, six foot three. His BMI works out to being 23. A BMI over 30 is considered obese. My BMI is obese. I'm obese. By medical standards, according to BMI charts, I'm obese. I'm 192 pounds, five foot six inches tall. My BMI is over 30. For Joel Fazer's BMI to be over 30, he would need to weigh 240 pounds plus. That means he'd have to gain 55 pounds to be considered obese. But me, I'm already obese. And so can you see that using your BMI to decide if you're obese is not really accurate. It's going to depend on how much muscle you have. And so what I like to use, and some others also, is body fat percentage. And so for a guy to be considered obese, over 25% body fat, that's considered obese. And overweight, over 20%. Joel Fazer is not over 20% in any of the tests he's used. And so Joel Fazer himself predicted himself to be 14%. He said, Coach Greg, can you be part of the video? I'm gonna ask you to give me my body fat percentage, send me videos, pictures. And so I stated, you are about 9% body fat. I said, quite literally, if he did a peak week, he could get up stage in a week and look better, leaner than half of the guys he'd be competing against. And so what do you think Joel Fazer's body fat as your best guess? I know you're not like, you know, 100% accurate, but like, what do you see? How, where do you see him? I don't have laser eyes like you. There so you go. <clears throat> so from the picture that you showed me, he looks like he's leaner than you. So if you're nine, then I'd say he's eight. And so it's not just me. I know it's other people. And if you think that Joel Fazer is anywhere close to 15% body fat, as it's stated on the DEXA scan, then your eyeballs, they're just not working. This is not an average physique. Joel Fazer is single digit body fat and for most natural athletes, he's literally too lean to make gains. Most people, as lean as Joel, would feel like garbage, not have energy, be starving. But Joel, he's an ectomorph. Ectomorphs on average tend to be thinner, have a harder time putting on muscle, and quite often are tall. And is that bad? Does he have horrible genetics? Just wasn't given the cards. No! Think of it, he's six foot three. I'm five six, I'm a madlet. And so do I feel bad for Joel Fazer? I mean, after all, he's six foot three, nine percent body fat, looks incredible. Of course not, he looks incredible. Perhaps not amazing genetics for being a monster of muscle, but he has amazing genetics for being lean, being tall, being athletic. And so what's wrong with that? Absolutely nothing. And so Joel should be focusing on his strengths and not his weaknesses. The fact that he doesn't have a ton of muscle who cares? I've always thought about a good physique, but look at me. 
This is me a year ago with pretty high body fat. And so Joe a year ago with what he says is pretty high body fat percentage, that is not high. That is still 20% or perhaps even a bit leaner. And so on average, most people are significantly fatter than Joel Fazier at his biggest. And that is one year ago. And just look at the progress he's made in only one year. It is in fact an incredible transformation. And this is me now. Definitely a lower body fat. Are you kidding me? Do you guys see this? Look at his physique. The biceps clearly visible as Pac-Man arms. You can clearly see six pack separating quads. The guy has very low body fat, far lower than the average person, leaner than probably 99% of guys, but yet he feels fat. I've experienced life at a pretty high body fat percentage and life at a very low one. And so even when he says I experienced life at a high body fat percentage, he's got his hands up in the air. I can clearly see abdominals, very clearly. And so in my opinion, he's clearly below 20% body fat, even at his fattest, which is not even overweight. And so even Joe at his fattest, bulk it up, force feed, do whatever, he's still lean. He's still in that ideal 10 to 20% range that most people should main gain at. Remember that word? You know, maintain a healthy body fat percentage and then slowly add muscle from there. I've already stated previously that at about 15% body fat, you get all the health benefits of being lean. There's no benefit other than aesthetics for being a model to get leaner than that. And so unless you're an athlete competing in sports involving weight classes, for example, MMA, boxing, or perhaps you're an elite athlete, a marathon runner, a cyclist, you need to be lighter to have less weight to carry. There's no real point of continuing to diet to get leaner. The king himself, Ronnie Coleman, claimed, and you would get down to how much, what percent body fat? I was 0.33. Yeah, you, you heard that right. And so how do you even figure out what percent body fat you are? And is it actually important? Well, Ronnie Coleman, arguably the best bodybuilder of all time. He's won eight Mr. Olympia titles. He stated his body fat was 0.33%. And we all know that's impossible. You would be dead. The human body needs approximately 3% body fat simply to survive anything lower than that. And you wouldn't function as a human being and you would eventually die. And so how did he get 0.33%? Well, they tested him using calipers. And are the calipers 100% accurate? No. And so when he states 0.33%, he's simply saying what he's told. He doesn't actually think he's 0.33%. Well, I hope he doesn't. And so there is a margin of error when being tested. And so Joe set out to find out what is the most accurate form of body fat testing, which is going to be the golden standard. As you can tell, I'm fairly lean in good lighting. In bad lighting like this, I look kind of average, maybe a bit leaner than the normal person. Really? Okay, and the first thing's first. You need extremely good lighting in order to dictate what body fat percentage you are. After all, I do this for a living. I literally tell people their body fat percentage with my laser eyes. And so when I look at Joe's physique under good and bad light, he has clearly defined six pack as well as separated quads. Sometimes I see guys with abdominals, but they have no definition in their thighs and vice versa. And so without all four views, top, bottom, back and front, very difficult to give an accurate body fat assessment, but he's showing us his feet front to back, top to bottom. And so I predict 9%. Body fat test number one, a scale. Let's see what this says. First up, the scale. The scale is gonna send an electrical impulse through the body and guess what body fat percentage it is. And the key word is guess. And what it's really doing, I'm gonna give you a secret. It's taking into account your height and weight and guessing how much fat you have based on that. It's literally doing that. You think it's using some science experiment mumbo jumbo to give you an estimate, but it's not. Oh, but you got a better scale. You got the athlete setting. Oh, you stood on it and you're 25%, but then you pressed the athlete setting and it went down. Do you know what that is? It's a pre-programmed method saying, oh, subtract about 5% if the guy thinks he's an athlete. What kind of athlete? Is he a professional bodybuilder? Is he a runner? Think of it. Is a runner going to have as much muscle as a bodybuilder? And so why would you just have one button athlete? If the testing was actually accurate, you would need to tell it what kind of person you are to predict what body fat you have. It would be able to do it. Be like, wow, guy's a lot of muscle, must be a bodybuilder. 8%. 19.1% body fat. 
<laughs> and so 19.1% body fat. And just so Joe doesn't feel so bad, when I stood on the scale last time, I was at 22.3% body fat. And so Coach Greg, who I say is probably about 9% myself, I was 23 plus percent. And so is the scale even remotely close to being accurate? No. And so what's the point of the scale? Well, it's very accurate in telling you how much you weigh. How much pounds or kilos, stones are you? Simply look at the number, track your weight week to week, and if overall you're going up, then you know you're in a calorie surplus. Overall, your weight going down, then overall you're probably in a calorie deficit. Body fat tester number two, Greg Doucette. Look close to competition shape. Leaner than I would say half the people that would get up on stage if you did one week of peak week diet. And so think of it, I have him in at 9.1%. Allie had him at 8%, even leaner than Coach Greg. She said, he's leaner than you. Allie sees me every day, saw Joe and said, he's leaner than you. And so there you have it. Do you think there's any chance he's 19.1%? And so I'm quite literally less than half of what the scale predicted. Body fat test number three, the skin fold caliper. This is a very common practice in universities and also in multi-million pound football clubs. Surely this is accurate. And so to do this, I would suggest you use a Lang skin fold caliper. There are cheaper ones out there, but they need to have the proper tension. If it presses too hard or not hard enough, the skin fold could actually be thinner or thicker. Now, the problem with the skin fold caliper, it's only as accurate as the person using it. I quite literally, in university, got tested using these calipers, and I watch other people do it completely wrong. For example, when you pinch the bicep, you're supposed to pinch the skin. I had someone grab under the muscle, pinch me right here, and said, oh my goodness, I never knew you were that fat. You look so lean, you're competing in two weeks, but wow, your body fat is through the roof. And I'm thinking, these are people that are going to go out into the world and test people's body fats? Well, thankfully, she didn't pass. Input in all your data. Yeah. This equation says that you're 9% body fat. And so the skin fold caliper, 9%. What did Coach Greg say? 9%. And so I do believe the skin fold caliper test that this guy was using was accurate. And the guy, he's experienced, he's done this a number of times. And so why wouldn't it be accurate? I mean, after all, we are using Coach Greg's laser eyes as the golden standard for testing, right? Or are we still using that ancient arbitrary DEXA scan? But is there a test that is completely accurate? Well, according to the internet, there's only one, the DEXA scan. Okay, Joey missed out on this. He's a young guy. There is only one actual test that can actually determine within 1% body fat what you actually are. The MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, that one, that is the golden standard. And so why don't we just use that one all the time? Well, the problem is it costs hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, and so it's not practical. It simply costs too much money. But what we do is we rely on the DEXA scan. DEXA scan, significantly cheaper, and for some reason has been praised as some kind of holy grail of body fat testing. That it's so accurate because it paints a picture, shows your fat and your muscle in different colors, and people love it. I've made countless videos talking about the inaccuracy of the DEXA scan. Just like if I ask a six year old to guess how much I weigh, once in a while they might guess 197 and get it right. But people, they just don't watch those videos and so I've given it up. Your body fat percentage is 15.8%. 15.8%. Right. And it came out as 15.8% body fat. You've seen the scale, he stepped on it, 19.1%. And you've seen my laser eyes, nine. And you've seen the skin fold caliper, nine. And you've heard Ali say, oh, probably eight, he's leaner than Coach Greg. And so what do you think is more likely? That he's 15.8% body fat or closer to what I am? See his physique, seen him flex. What do you think? Joe Fazer himself said 14%, but I do believe he's suffering from body dysmorphia. And so what do you think? Let me know in the comments section what percent body fat you think Joe Fazer is. And you would think after years of testing and using the DEXA scan, upon looking at his physique, he could have said, wow, 15.8, that doesn't make sense. I mean, clearly I can see you're leaner than 15.8%, but he has to go by the test. He's probably paid to say whatever the test says, but imagine if it was Coach Greg. Imagine I'm working at the DEXA fan clinic. The person walks in and I'm like, nah, you're probably 9%. The results come up at 15.8. And I would say, hey, the DEXA scan's not accurate. 
And so what are the problem with these testing measures, these results? Well, it can affect your ego, the way you feel about yourself. You can get depressed, hate training, give up. After all, think of it. You train month after month. You look in the mirror and you're looking better, feeling better. You go get a DEXA scan result. It says you gained fat and lost muscle. How'd you feel? You feel like quitting, throwing in the towel. I will say, hand in core, yeah. on whatever you want me to put my other hand yeah. on, um, where DEXA wins hands down is consistency. And so the video title could be called Calling Out the BS of the Guy in the DEXA Scan. It's not true, he's not saying the truth. It's, it's not actually the truth. He might believe it, he might think it, but I mean, he has to. It's his job, it's what he does for a living. The best way to determine your body fat, just look at your body. Just take a photo, not in super elite lighting. Guess wants to take a photo of you in completely natural lighting. He says, don't use the best lighting, just natural lighting. My opinion, use any lighting you want, just use the same lighting. What's important is that you test yourself at the same time of day, preferably first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. That way you can decide, judge just how much body fat that you actually have. If you just went to the gym and got a pump and you changed lighting, of course you're gonna look better. And if you just finish breakfast and you're bloated, you're not gonna look very lean. If I eat a big meal, for example, a salad, and my stomach's hanging out and I had to show a picture and guess my body fat, you're gonna say well over 10%. But if I first wake up, flex or have a pump, you're gonna say, dude, you're shredded. And so the state of your body, are you in a pump state, relaxed, first thing in the morning, have you eaten? That is gonna make a significant change in how you look. Everyone stores fat differently. Some people can look better at a higher body fat than others, but that's a pretty rough guide. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys. And one more thing I'd like to add is the more muscle you have, then the less body fat you're gonna have as a percentage. Because think of it like this, math-wise. If you have 20 pounds of fat in your body and you weigh 200 pounds, you would have 10% body fat. 20 is 10% of 200. But if you go up to 400 pounds of muscle, I know it's impossible, but still, your body fat percentage would literally go in half, even though you have the same amount of it. And so without going on a diet, without losing body fat, if you join the gym, work out, lift weights, and add muscle, whatever that adds, it's gonna actually drop your body fat percentage. And so you could technically main gain, keeping the same amount of body fat on your body, but slowly add muscle, and your body fat percentage over time as you build muscle will gradually go down. So you could start at 20% body fat, and over time, you keep building more and more muscle, and eventually, with the same amount of fat, the exact same amount, your body fat goes from 20, 19, 15, and so on. Hope the video helped, ending it here. Looking for harder than last time supplements, creatine, turk builder, protein powder, pre-workout, stim, non-stim, all kinds of stuff, too much to list. Click the link in the description. Also, training books, the circle diet book, the cookbooks, the hard copy, click the link in the description. Watch the bloops, subscribe, click the bell button, comment for the algorithm. Remember, gregdusset.com for coaching. Also, follow me on Instagram, gregdusset.ip pro. And until next time, I am out.